All right, so welcome to another video of car plebs. In today's video, I will focus on why did I select my specific example of the 996, the features that were important to me and might be important to you when you decide to purchase your potentially first Porsche 911, the 996. I wanna share a disclaimer, this is an opinion piece. I am in no way, shape or form a subject matter expert. We also see that many of our viewers are watching without subscribing. So we would kindly ask you to subscribe as this helps us to grow the channel. While I am aware that in the US, potentially getting a 996 is much cheaper. People like Magnus Walker, Hoovy's Garage have nice examples for the below 10K dollar mark, but here in the EU, I think it's a bit of a pipe dream. So let's start with the bad news for EU 996 shoppers. The prices for reasonable examples in my observation have been consistently increasing over the past years. This is at least what I have observed by scouring Mobile de E. So let's start with some basic search criteria. Let's begin with a relatively high but still palpable mileage of 160,000 kilometers or 100,000 miles. Honestly, I would not want to go above due to the fact that I would want to still have much headroom in terms of driving. The sad fact is that cars even with impeccable service records will be more difficult to sell above the 200k mark either in Germany or Europe or the US, at least in my observation, plus I can say this from the perspective of the, of the buyer, that I would as well be rather reluctant to purchase a 996 with above 200,000 kilometers, unless it was, for example, under, I don't know, maybe 10K, 12K euros. The next most important factor in my eyes is the gearbox. In our case, a rather simple selection as we prefer the manual, or in German, they like to call cars with a manual gearbox a Schalter. This is the right moment to say that the Tiptronic is not terrible. In my personal opinion, the 996 or the 911 is a sports car. I have been in many hourly traffic jams and never once have I wondered that, hmm, what would I do to have an automatic? The DCT, while an amazing transmission in my E92 M3 was the sole reason I got rid of it. And here we are, you can't find a car below the 20,000 euro mark. It's honestly speaking quite the pity, as in the past you were able to find similar spec cars in the range of like 12.5 to 15,000 euros. That is the range that I bought my 996 for, by the way. And that right there is the challenge. I would definitely not buy a 996 for anything above the 25,000 euro mark, unless it would be maybe a 4S. This is a good segue to talk about today's sponsor. <laughs> Just kidding, a Carrera 4 where the four stands for all wheel drive. It's also in my eyes, a KO factor similar to the Tiptronic for these three reasons. All of the Carrera fours have the Bosch Motronic throttle control unit. This means that your throttle is no longer controlled by a cable, which given that the Carrera two until late 99 is the last cable throttled 911. It's just amazing to feel and know that your feet are interfacing with pedals that are mechanically connected. Another baller feature is that when you open the engine compartment, you can open the throttle with your hand. Second factor is that why would someone even buy an all wheel drive 911? It's the best design of rear wheel drive engine with amazing natural traction due to the fact that the majority of the weight sits on the rear axle. I have driven my 911s in snow and never once have I wondered, hmm, I would really want the four. Frankly speaking, unless you live in a region where 80% of the year there is snow, it's pointless. And even then I would consider the two for driving dynamics alone. The last factor is the fact that the trunk is smaller on the four due to all of the necessary gubbins for the drivetrain. Another topic that you might think or you might question is, what about the cabrio? My opinion is that you, if you have never experienced one, go ahead and buy it. My 997 linked at the top is a cab and it is frankly speaking amazing. The roof comes down at speeds of 50 or below kilometers per hour. You can hear the wail of the flat six even more. You can enjoy the elements and compared to other cars, the 996, 997 have been designed with the Cabrio in mind. Thus chassis stiffness is not that much of an issue. This in combination with the cloth top results in a weight penalty of only 85 kilograms. Furthermore, the engine is in the rear, thus trunk space is not compromised. Maybe I'm crazy as I drive the, with the top down in winter at 10 degrees C and I still love it. So in conclusion, do consider a cabrio with a 911. The main reason I got the 996 as a coupe is that my 997 is a cab. 
And that then leads me to my specific 996. As mentioned in my purchase overview, which is linked at the top, after many poor car related choices, I never purchase without a proper PPI or pre-purchase inspection. A benefit of getting this done directly at Porsche is that you can ask for your option codes. Of course, you should do this in advance via many online services to alleviate the risk of buying a turd of an example and wasting your time. But having a pre-purchase inspection from Porsche will definitely come in handy for resale the day you decide to move on from your 996. All right, so let's take a look at my specific 996. One thing I would highly suggest to look for is the sports package. It includes the anti-slip regulation, it includes the locking differential, as well as the sport suspension. So let's start with the sport suspension. The sport suspension includes stiffer dampers and springs. The car sits overall lower by 10 millimeters, giving it a much nicer stance. And lastly, it includes also stiffer anti-roll bars. So you can definitely feel that the car is stiff. I would rate it somewhere in between the 997 when it's in its normal mode and when it's in its stiff mode. So it provides a nice balance of not being too hard on normal roads, but then when you do spirited driving, it does feel tight in a way, so I do appreciate it having that. The next thing is the locking differential, which I highly recommend. You can definitely feel a difference as opposed to my 997, which is awaiting a wave track differential change. Uh, definitely when you slide, you feel the difference, how your throttle input changes the direction of the car. The next thing is the ASR which means that it cuts throttle if, you, if the car detects you're starting to slip. And again, when you're doing spirited driving, it's nice weather, you have good traction, you don't need it, you can turn it off. But on the other hand, if you're driving in adverse weather conditions, it's a nice security to know in the back of your head that if you add throttle, either on snow, ice, whatever, that it's going to cut away power. So you have basically both options. And I would rather have it than not because a lot of the 996s didn't have until 99 or whenever the 996.2 came about. I think it was mandatory. Also the Carrera 4s, it was mandatory to have it. So I'm happy that this one as well has it, but some of them don't. The next thing to note here is the 18 inch Techno wheel, which honestly speaking, I'm not a big fan of. I'll show the picture right now. So I'm happy that the owner switched the wheels. Next, next on the list is the rear window wiper. I think it's absolutely useful when it rains. It does help, of course, with rear visibility. And plus, it's a nice addition to have. And you can look in the rear view mirror to see your rear wiper wiping away the rain. It's kind of cute in a way that you have a sports car that has a rear window wiper. And I think not many sports cars have that. Next on the list that I almost forgot are the sport seats. So these are absolutely mandatory on any 996 in my eyes. I mean, I sat down in a few 996s that had the so-called tombstone seats and they do not, in my eyes, provide enough lateral support. So I would definitely recommend getting that. It also does significantly, in my eyes, increase the later resale value because it's something that everybody's either wanting to swap in instead of their tombstones. Of course, it would be best to have the GT3 seats, but they're right now, costing approximately three to 4,000 euros to get a pair of those. So this is your best bet sort of in between that. Another thing to think about is whether you want to have electrical seat height adjustment or just a mechanical one. So from what I know, the mechanical ones sit a bit lower on its lowest position because you do not have all of the electric electronics on the bottom of the seat. Again, my recommendation would be to get the mechanical ones if you are, let's say, above five, five foot eight or above 185 centimeters or so, just so that you have those extra few centimeters of room. Plus, anyways, the backrest can be adjusted electronically, so you're really just talking about height adjustment and forward and aft, so I mean, that's not going to really change that much. Let's move on. Uh, the next thing that stands out here is the moonroof or the sunroof. I'm very happy to have it. I love having access to air um, in the sense of either being a cab or a sunroof. It really does add to the whole climate of, you know, spirited driving with nice weather. You're, you're having a, the open top and you're feeling the sun on your face, etc. It's, it's a really nice addition. Plus, you don't have to open it fully. You can just raise it a bit like 10 to 15 degrees and then you get some fresh air that way. So. From my perspective, it's a nice to have. There are some people that will tell you that, okay, it's going to break, you're gonna have issues with it, but really, I mean, you're going to have issues with, with a 20 plus year old car anyway. And I haven't experienced never on any of my other cars any issues with the moonroof, sunroof. So from that perspective, I would say, you know, the car already has the IMS issue and the M96 engine. So I mean, at the end of the day, 
just choose what you want. Don't be looking always purely at maintenance because it's not always going to be as the horror stories show on the forums that everything is just going to break apart. Your engine's gonna explode. The cabrio top's not gonna come down. All of the buttons are gonna break, etc., etc. Now, what I would like to see on my car are the xenon headlamps. That is something that I've shown in the top five likes and dislikes video that really with the base headlamps, <laughs> I mean, night visibility is you're pretty much hunting for a car to be in front of you with, with lights so that you can at least follow him. So they're actually absolutely terrible. So I would look into that. I'm still looking online for finding a used set, but they're quite expensive at around 1500 to 2000, uh, 2,200 euros. So the one thing that I dislike about my 996 is the code 614. It's the preparation for telephone installation Motorola 2200. So what that means is I don't care about the interior, but really there's an antenna on the roof that kind of breaks away the line, the typical 911 curve on this or the side profile. You have an antenna sticking out. It's not the end of the world. It's just if I had one way to adjust it, it would be without that because then at the end of the day, you have a gaping hole in the top of your roof and it's not obviously practical to remove it and then try to fill it out with something. So that's the one thing that I'm, I'm not a big fan of. So that in principle sums up my 996. Again, it's not the most loaded 996 and I don't want it to be. I like the simplicity of this one. It's a nice contrast to the 997. So from that perspective, I'm perfectly happy with it and I still think it's a nice balance of sporty goods as opposed to, you know, luxuries in terms of additional leather speakers, whatever. I mean, I don't care. So let's take a look at some additional highlights in terms of my 996, maybe something that you should look into as well as some lowlights. So in terms of the highlights, number one is that I have the turbo hollow spoke wheels made by BBS. You might not, not like the way they look. I personally like them a lot. I think it suits the character of the 996 overall quite well. And then there are the second wheels that I would be looking for, which are the GT3 wheels with from BBS as well. There are some, there are two piece wheels with screws that are quite harder to maintain just because of the complexity of design, but they also look amazing when they're refinished and they're looking brand new. In terms of the low lights, I was really not a big fan of the steering wheel. Yes, it looked classic kind of 911 with the four spoke, um, but on the other hand, it was rather thin, the leather felt terrible and there weren't any thumb grips. So from that perspective, I, I started, I think on the first week looking for a different steering wheel. I also had the steering wheel bracket itself issue where the horn would honk by itself. So that was obviously not desirable. So then I found the steering wheel, the three spoke, which came in the lifted or the 996.2. That felt already much, much better, reminded much more of the 997. So the, it was thicker, thumb grips, and it had the Porsche crest colored in the middle as opposed to just embossed. So potentially it might be lucky, someone may have already replaced the steering wheel. The second thing is that from stock, I was supposed to have the CR21 radio, which was a cassette radio. So I'm happy it's, it's gone in a way. On the other hand, they upgraded it with a, a modern looking one. So then the first thing I wanted to do was replace that radio for two reasons. I hated the way it looks. It didn't fit with the interior design and color. The overall interior is black and that radio was kind of silver and with, with blue lights, etc. So it didn't fit the overall theme. So in conclusion, as the saying goes, buy the best example possible as yes, it will cost you more in the beginning, but then in the future, you will have to shell out much more. In my opinion, avoid the Tiptronic at all costs. Similar Similarly to the all-wheel drive versions. It's a pity, honestly speaking, that the 996s have risen so much in pricing. In the review that we did on the car, which will be linked to the top, it's an amazing car. So if you can find one with a reasonable configuration and mileage, no crash history, in the 20 to 25k euro mark as of January 2021, go ahead and buy one. Thank you very much for watching Car Clubs. Wishing everybody a nice day.